Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today we will learn gynecological ultrasound anatomy. Today we look at the normal ultrasound anatomy of the uterus and the adnexa. We will study labeled ultrasound images in both transabdominal and transvaginal approaches. The labeling text size is kept small to prevent obscuring the images. First, we will look at transabdominal images of the uterus in the longitudinal plane. This is the uterus. The bladder is anterior to the uterus and appears anechoic when it is filled. Its uppermost part is the fundus. The middle portion is the body. And the lower part of the uterus is the cervix. This echogenic line is the endometrium. It is the innermost layer of the uterus, and it is surrounded by a hypoechoic layer called the subendometrial halo. This is actually the innermost layer of the myometrium. It is also called the junctional zone. Myometrium is the second layer of the uterus. It is a thick muscular layer with medium level echogenicity. This is the myometrium. The outermost layer of the uterus is the serosa. It appears as a thin hyperechoic border. And this lower part is the cervix. On the right is a close up image focusing on the cervix. This is in a pregnant uterus. This is to show you the internal os and the external os. Internal os is the junction between the cervix and the body of the uterus. The external os is the junction between the cervix and the vagina. This is the vagina. It has a somewhat striated appearance with some thin linear echogenic lines. The rectum is present posterior to the uterus in this area. These are more images of the uterus with different image qualities. In the left image, let's identify the structures. The anterior most structures are the skin, followed by the abdominal wall. Then we have a distended and echoic bladder. This is the bladder wall and posterior to the bladder is the uterus. We can see the hyperechoic outermost serosa. Then we have the thick muscular layer called the myometrium. The innermost layer of the myometrium, the junctional zone, can also be seen. It is also called the subendometrial halo. It surrounds the hyperechoic endometrium, which can also be seen. This is the cervix, and this is the vagina. In the image on the right, we can see the bladder. This is the myometrium, and this thin, echogenic linear structure is the endometrium, and it is surrounded by a hypoechoic subendometrial halo. This part is the cervix. This image shows a part of the uterus and the ovary in the longitudinal plane. The probe has moved laterally. This is the ovary. The ovarian stroma is the supportive tissue framework. It appears somewhat homogeneous and a bit hypoechoic to the uterus. Anechoic rounded structures will be seen in the ovary. These are the follicles. Due to these follicles, the ovary is easier to identify. Between the ovary and the uterus will be the broad ligament and the fallopian tube. They are not actually visible, but are expected to be in this location. In normal cases, the fallopian tubes are not seen on ultrasound. On the right is a transverse image showing the distended bladder and the right ovary. You can see an oval-shaped structure with two distinct anechoic follicles. Because of these follicles, we can distinguish the ovary from nearby tissues. 
This is a close-up image of the ovary in the transverse plane. This ovary appears more hypoechoic due to the presence of follicles. These are transverse images showing the bladder, the uterus, and the ovaries. This is the abdominal wall, followed by the distended bladder. You can see the uterus in the middle and the ovaries on its side. This is the myometrium. The subendometrial halo can also be seen here. It appears as a subtle hypoechoic circle around the endometrium. Within the ovaries, you can see the follicles. One in the left ovary, and around five follicles in the right ovary. The image on the right is a bit hazy. You may come across such images. The bladder is not fully distended. We can identify the uterus, but we can't really see the subendometrial halo and endometrium. The left ovary is partially visible. The right ovary is visible, but a part of it is cut off in this image. Now we will look at transvaginal images of the uterus and ovaries. Transvaginal images provide much better detail than transabdominal images. This image is in the transverse plane. It shows the uterus in a cross section with parts of the ovaries seen on the sides. We can see the echogenic endometrium with the hypoechoic subendometrial halo around it. These hypoechoic tubular structures that you see in the myometrium are uterine vessels. The image on the right shows the uterus in the longitudinal plane. The endometrium is seen more clearly in this image. The subendometrial zone is also visible. This is the fundus, and this is the cervix. These are the uterine vessels these tubular and small round anechoic structures. This is the rectum, posterior to the uterus. This is the cul-de-sac, also known as the pouch of Douglas or the recto-uterine pouch. It is the most dependent portion of the female pelvis. It is located between the posterior wall of the uterus and the anterior wall of the rectum. In the supine position, during an ultrasound exam, any free pelvic fluid tends to collect here first due to gravity. In this view, the ovary is seen next to an anechoic tubular vessel. This vessel will be the internal iliac vein. It is usually seen next to the ovary. And in this image, this area between the ovary and the uterus represents the ovarian ligament. Ovarian ligament may be seen in some images such as this one. This image shows a dominant follicle in the ovary. This structure within the dominant follicle is the cumulus oophorus. Cumulus oophorus is a layer that surrounds the egg and it appears like this. It is very clearly seen in a transvaginal image. It may be seen in some pelvic scans. This image shows a corpus luteum. It appears on ultrasound as a thick-walled structure with irregular-shaped walls. On color Doppler, it has a ring of fire representing peripheral vascularity. It may have a cloudy or cystic center that can range from hypoechoic to hyperechoic and is a normal finding following ovulation. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more imaging videos.